Hi and welcome to Freedio Hub. Today in Cloud Computing Lab, we'll learn how can we install Windows Server and then we'll try to install IAS, which is Internet Information Services, through a PowerShell command line. So uh, there are two ways to install IAS, which is a web server, either through PowerShell or through the uh, interface that we have for Windows Server Manager. So for that, we are using VirtualBox today. As you can see, this is version 7. If you want to download it, click on Downloads and download the latest version, depending on what kind of platform you are on. Uh, I'll download the Windows version, which is Windows Host, and then make sure that you have downloaded the extension pack for that as well. Now, um, for the installation, you might require Windows Server 2022. A free version, a free evaluation version is available on their website. I'll post the link in the video description. You can go to Windows Server 2022. Just search for free evaluation version and then click on download the ISO, fill in the details and you'll be able to download a free version of Windows Server 2022. As you can see, we have installed other operating systems earlier. If you want, you can check them on our channel. Today, we'll be installing Windows Server 2022. So for that, we'll click new. Now here, we'll select the Windows Server name first of all, then we'll select the path where we would like to save it. I'm not selecting the ISO file because I want to select it at the time of installation. Sometimes when you select it over here, you end up having some issues. Just my personal choice. It depends if you want to select it yourself. I'm going for Microsoft Windows in the list. And then in the version from the drop down list, you can select Windows Server 2022, which is 64 bit. Press next. Here you can select the RAM that you want to allocate. Now it really depends how much RAM do you have available on your PC. I have 32 gigs of RAM, so I'm selecting eight gigs. You can select it according to your own PC. Uh, here also depends how many CPUs you have. I have 20 CPUs. I'm allocating four CPUs for my virtual machine. Now press next. Here I want to give round about 30 gigs to my virtual machine. So I'll press, uh, I'll type in 30 and press next and press finish now as you can see my virtual machine is ready if i want to make any modifications to the setup i can go to settings and i can make the necessary changes over here for me i don't want to make any changes if you want you can have a bridge adapter over here or internal network depends what kind of setup you have so just press ok and then press start as you can see, as I didn't select the ISO file earlier, so it's asking me to select the ISO file. So we'll select the ISO. I have selected the ISO file and then I'll press mount and retry reboot. Now, as you can see, it's loading the files and it would start the installation process. Now here, press next, install. Now, since I'm testing it for evaluation purposes, I don't have the key, so I'll press, I don't have a product key. So we'll be able to install Windows Server. It would work, so we'll be able to test it. And if you want to uh, install the key or you want to add the key to it, you can do it later. Now here, it's a bit tricky that you need to understand what's the difference between standard and standard desktop edition. Standard edition is a normal edition which omits the Windows graphical environment. So you'll have to control the operating system using the command prompt or PowerShell as written over here or remotely from Windows Admin Center. Desktop experience will give you an interface which you are very familiar with, um, like we use any Windows operating system where you'll be able to control everything through a graphical user interface. Uh, then you can see that there is data center edition and uh, desktop experience. Desktop experience is the same thing, but the difference between the data center and standard is that on standard edition, you'll be install, you'll be able to run other operations of Windows uh, uh, Server comfortably. The only difference is that on data center edition, you can have unlimited number of virtual machines. Whereas on standard edition, you can have only two virtual machines at the moment. So in order to have the full flavor of the operating system, we'll go with the Windows Server 2022 data center edition with desktop experience. Press next and we'll continue the installation process.
Now make sure you're not pressing any key over here otherwise it would start installing windows again. So we leave it and we let it install by itself. Now make sure that you're selecting an alphanumeric password which is quite difficult if you'll go with the standard password it won't accept it. So it's loading the initial interface of server manager. Now server manager is the dashboard of a server through which you can manage the entire operating system. So we'll give it some time till it would load. Um, in the meantime, what you can do is that you can install the uh, tools which are required for uh, the drivers and other things. So. Uh, in order to add that, we'll go to Devices and then we'll select Insert Guest Tools. It would insert the DVD over here with the help of which we'll be able to install different tools which would support the graphics and other drivers which are required for the virtual machine. Now we'll try to see if the DVD has been inserted and here you can see VirtualBox Guest Editions. Double click on it and then try to install the additions of it. It would install all the tools, select the option and it would restart your virtual machine which is your Windows Server 2022. Restart. And as you can see, it has loaded the operating system in a full screen mode where now you can make the necessary changes to the operating system. Now, as I told you, this is the basic interface of Windows Server. If you want to add any tools or manage the server, you'll click on Add Roles and Features. If you want to see the tools that you have already installed, you can click on Tools and these things would be appearing over here. As you can see, we don't have internet information service installed on this computer. It's not listed over here. Even if we'll click to manage and I'll click add roles and features and I'll press next, role based and then I'll press next and next you can see that Windows Server IAS is not checked over here. It means that IAS is not installed on this server and we'll install it using the PowerShell command that we'll be covering shortly. But before that, go to the local server. You'll be able to see the name which is given to this server by default once we'll finish the installation. So in order to make things easy, we'll have to rename the machine so that we can easily uh, manage it later. So in order to do that, click on change and name it, for example, win SRV uh, 2022. Of course, it would uh, require a restart. Press OK and restart the server. Now our server has restarted, so we'll go to local server and we can find out that the name has been changed to win SRV 2022. Now we'll try to install IAS on this one, which is a internet information server. It is used to host the applications on your computer. So in order to do that, we'll click start, then we'll type PowerShell. And you'll see PowerShell over here. If you want to install certain things on the computer using the PowerShell, you'll right click on it and select run as administrator. It would open the interface of the PowerShell. Now in order to run the PowerShell command, we'll type, uh, we want to install IAS, so we'll type in get Windows feature and then in the name of it and then we'll type web server and this one. Now sometimes it gives you an error that you don't have the get feature installed. So if you get an error like that, we'll have to install the uh, feature on that one. And in order to do that, we'll type in DISM and then slash online. And then we'll give a space and then slash get dash features and press enter. So as you can see, it's installing the required features.
now once that's done you can clear it and press the up arrow key it would show you get windows feature name web server press enter and as you can see it's showing you that it has windows server available now the only difference was that after installing the get features i restarted my server and then i ran the same command now to show you again click start go to powershell and in powershell right click on this one and select run as administrator you'll see this window and then i'll check for get windows feature so it would tell you that if the feature is available with windows or not now once you'll get this option that it's available now we'll try to install the feature on this one and in order to install that we'll type in install and then we'll type in windows feature and then we'll type in the name of it and we'll call it as web server which is the actual name of it and we want to include the management tools also so we'll type in include management tools now once that's done we'll press enter and it would start installing IAS as you can see it's installing IAS on your machine now as you can see it's saying that there is no need to restart it's successfully installed and these are the things which are installed now I want to set a service of uh, IAS to restart once my computer restarts as well so in order to enable that I'll tap uh, type set and then I'll type service and then the name of the service and I'll name it as w3 svc that's the name of it and minus startup type and I'll set it as automatic automatic and press enter so now the service type is automatic once my server would restart it would automatically start the service now in order to check if IAS is installed on your machine or not you'll open Microsoft Edge or any other browser that you have installed on your server since we are starting it for the first time it would take some time to set it up you can confirm the settings and continue without sign in and now you can type localhost and press enter as you can see this screen means that we have IAS installed means that the web server has been successfully installed on this server to further check it now we can exit this window we don't need it anymore if I'll go to this PC and if I'll go to C drive here you can see INET pub and in that www root so we can host the files over here if we want to run any application or a website from this server now in order to verify it we can go to the server manager from here and we can click on server manager and as I told you that this is the dashboard here you can see IAS is listed here which wasn't there before because we didn't install it further it should have been listed under tools as well so if I'll click on you can see internet information services is mentioned over here as well further if you want to check it in add roles and features and if you'll go to next and next and then press next you can see that this thing is selected over here and it has been installed through the PowerShell if you want to add certain features to it you can click on it you can collapse it and you can further check for the things that are required as per the applications that you are hosting you can select the things from here so that's the way how can we install it through the PowerShell now I'll show you how can we install it using the uh, graphical user interface so for that um, I'll first of all install the IAS which is currently installed there are two ways to do it either you can go to the uh, remove roles and features press next and then go to next and here you can uncheck this thing and press next and press next and remove so it would remove it from there the second option is that if you are making any major changes to your server you can first create a snapshot of the server 
and then restore the server to the previous snapshot so that you can easily recover back to the previous state where you were. Now once unstored it would say that it would require a restart so we'll close it and as you can see IES disappeared from here so and uh, we'll restart the server but you can see this notification over here as well it is saying that a restart is pending so we'll restart the server and uh, we'll install IES using a graphical user interface. Now as you can see my server has restarted and you cannot see IES over here and even if you'll click tools you'll not be able to see IES here. Further if we'll go to add roles and features you can see that it is not checked here also and if I'll go to this PC and I'll go to C I have INET pub www root disappeared from here and if I'll open my browser and I'll type in localhost it won't load anything since the web server has been installed from the server so now in order to install it through the graphical user interface you'll click on manage add roles and features then press next press next press next and then you'll select Windows IAS from here it is selecting the management tools you can select add features and press next it's even asking if you want to include any other features we'll keep it as default if your applications require dotnet framework features you can select it from here i'll keep it as default i'll press next further if you want to add any features from here which is required by your application like compatibility mode for ias or management services etc you can select it else press next and install it would install ias again on your server then it would show you installation succeeded press close there is no need to restart the server it would give you a message over here as well you can see ias and under tools also you can see ias is installed if you want to manage it you can click on it and uh, you can set the settings for your server applications website uh, default documents etc if you want to load asp.net pages you can add it from here and rest of the settings for your web server can be handled from here uh, you can restart the server you can stop the server you can see the application pool and uh, you can define the settings as per your own requirements now if i'll go to the same inet pub folder in c drive you'll be able to see the www root folder is here again and if i'll open my browser and i'll type in localhost i'll be able to see the website now in order to check the reachability of the server on the network i'll have to change the settings so i went to network and i selected host only adapter uh, once selecting the host only adapter the ip address of this machine would change so uh, in order to check it i'll type ip config and it would show me the ip address of this machine which is 192.168.56.107 so now in order to check that i'll log in from my windows 11 host machine and i'll try to ping this IP address from the host machine which is 192.168.56.107 it means that there is a reachability between the host machine and the virtual server so since now there is reachability I'll try to enter the IP address from the host machine of our Windows server which is a virtual server and if I'll enter as you can see I can see the web server which is running on my remote server um, if i'll try to enter the name of the server as you remember i selected win srv 2022 and if i'll press enter i'll still be able to reach the same server by its name because the ip address is referring back to the name and name to the ip address so we are easily able to access it on the domain so that's how we set up a web server on a network environment and you can host your own applications within your own network and your own server which is a cloud server would be available to rest of the guys on the network 
that's it for today thank you very much